Now, I'm gonna come right out and say it. I really like the first Hellboy movie. Does it have some problems? Sure. But hey, it was 2004, and we were still trying to figure out what a modern superhero movie was. And it's not surprising that for the films, they went for the big, world-ending stories of Hellboy. But honestly, I always preferred the in-between stories of the Hellboy series. You know, where it's just Hellboy working a job, being a detective to hunt down the monster of the week. No big character changing moments and no world ending stakes. Because when the world's existence is always on the line, then it no longer really matters, does it? But again, that's just my personal opinion. My point is, when I heard a low-budget Hellboy movie was being made that adapted one of these in-between Hellboy stories, I was super excited. Especially since The Crooked Man is probably one of the best stories you could choose for a low-budget film. So I was hopeful that maybe someone somewhere put some actual thought into making this movie. Unfortunately, I would be disappointed. Again, cause this movie is not good. The best way I can describe this movie is, remember when the Sci-Fi Channel was spelled like this? And they used to put out original Sci-Fi Channel movies that were so bad it was almost comical? We have an alien possessed mammoth on the loose and if we don't stop it, the government's gonna kill all of us. Yeah, that's exactly what this movie feels like terrible CGI that never should have been there in the first place, horribly written dialogue coupled with questionable acting skills, zero flow, and a narrative that doesn't make sense most of the time, and of course, trying really hard to be too cool for school when they don't have the budget nor the writing talent to make it so. It almost made me nostalgic for some Sci-Fi Channel original movies. I may just have to go pop in Anonymous Rex. Oh, you don't know what that is? Huh? Oh, oh. Fun fact, these two films came out in the same year. <laughs> yup. Anyways, for my highbrow critic score, I give Hellboy the Crooked Man a 3 out of 10. And for my Schmo score, the score for the average Joe Schmo, I give it a 4 out of 10. Now, this is the part where I explain my review scores, so if you would like to watch Hellboy the Crooked Man spoiler free, this is where we part ways. Thanks for showing up, and I want you to have a good day. Now, there are many problems with this film, most of which I mentioned earlier, so for this review, I'm going to focus on the three biggest problems. One, working within your means, i.e. if you don't have the budget for competent CGI, don't use it. The choice to have terrible CGI monsters in broad daylight is baffling. Because for one, the Crooked Man story doesn't really require it. And two, when this movie does practical effects, they're actually pretty good. So why? Why you do this? This just screams inexperience or incompetence. Because part of being a filmmaker is knowing what you can and can't do and then working within what you can do. Quentin Tarantino's Reservoir Dogs comes to mind. You know, he didn't have the budget to film a jewelry heist gone wrong, but he did have the budget to rent a warehouse, which is why, instead of spectacle, Quentin focused more on a compelling dialogue and a character-driven narrative. And now it's considered one of the greatest movies ever made. You always have to work within your means, because if you don't, your movie turns into one big clown show. Two, tell a completed story. So about 30 minutes in, a witch leaves them a horse 
that then turns out to be Tom's father and he dies. Then the entire movie happens. Yup, the crooked man gets straightened out and it's all over. When they suddenly stumble upon the witch from before who is now powerless and Tommy goes, I knew I held on to this old bridle for a reason. And then the movie ends with this shot. Confused? Well, then you should have read the original Hellboy comic. That's so stupid! If you have never read The Crooked Man, you are going to be confused at times while watching this movie, which is an absolute failure on the part of the filmmakers. Unless you are making a sequel film, the audience should not have to read or watch anything to understand what's going on in your movie. It's on you as the storyteller to provide all the information the audience needs. That's like storytelling 101. I would expect something like this from a high schooler made film, but not a professional production. And three, narrative flow and cohesion. The biggest problem with this movie is the narrative. It is so awkward, clunky, to the point where it downright doesn't even make sense. For example, I'll give you the opening sequence. So after the terrible CGI spider flips the train and then gets away, oops, they randomly walk through the woods till they just happen upon a rural town. And unfortunately, this town is so rural, they don't have phone lines. But don't worry, they aren't freaked out by seeing this hellish monster walk out of the woods because they done seen his picture in a magazine once. Okay. So the woman invites them inside and there's a boy convulsing on the floor in his underwear. And she's like, ah, oh, don't worry about that. He just bone witched by Cora Fisher. And then Tom walks in and goes, did somebody say Cora Fisher? Tom, y'all back from the war. I haven't seen you and blah, 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 blah. Do you see the many, many problems here? How about instead of introducing one of your main characters by having him just randomly barge in mid conversation, you instead have him, I don't know, come across Hellboy in the forest on his way back home after he hears the massive train crash. He could offer to lead them to his town and then point them in the right direction of the town over that has a phone. This would give you time to, you know, develop him as a character, as well as provide a middleman between Hellboy and the villagers, who absolutely would have lost their minds seeing a giant red devil walking out of the woods. You could then have them enter the town as everyone is in a panic after finding another boy that has been witched. This would also give Hellboy more of an incentive to help the town and Tom, as he would be returning the favor to Tom for guiding him out of the woods. See how that hits all the same narrative points as before, but isn't a chaotic, awkward mess? There's a lot of this in here. Like at one point, the average not magical human decides to go down a dark, scary hole to plug up the evil? Wait, what? How? What? So she goes down, gets attacked, and runs into the big CGI spider from the beginning of the movie. Uh oh, SpaghettiOs. But don't worry, she has magic now. Oh, you're confused by this? Looks like someone wasn't paying attention to the one-off minute-long conversation she had with Cora, where she subtly hints that she may have some sort of past with magic. Now, don't you feel dumb? That makes that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> it's so bad. And no, adding a flashback scene as the events on screen are unfolding in a desperate attempt to make the scene make sense doesn't work. Also, they hint or show us a lot of things in the movie, but then never follow through with them. Like, why the crooked man is so hell-bent on getting Tom's bone. The greater mystery of why the land beneath them feels so evil. And why Tom ain't wearing no shoes. Why he like this. Like I said, this movie is in some desperate need of some serious edits and rewriting because it is a mess. So that's pretty much it. 
Does Hellboy, The Crooked Man, have some cool scenes in it? Yeah, it's got a couple. Are they completely overshadowed by bad writing, bad acting, and terrible CGI? Oh yeah. I don't necessarily recommend this movie, but if you're a Hellboy fan and you find yourself nostalgic for those old, poorly made sci-fi channel original movies, hey, this one's for you. Anyways, thanks for being here. I appreciate you, and I'll catch you at the next one. Thank <laughs> you.